Then we're ready to start. Tommy, mm -hmm. the scene is yours. All right, is the mic on? Yeah, cool. Uh, hi, everyone, and welcome to my talk, Continuous Delivery of Microservices. I hope you had a great conference so far. Uh, I'm going to start with introducing myself. My name is Tom Tunia, and I work at Debo, which is a Swedish consultant based here in Stockholm. We help our clients become more efficient in their systems development processes. We help them implement continuous delivery, DevOps, Agile, and lean ways of working. Since I work in this space, I tend to follow quite closely what happens in the market. And I've noticed during the past few years that more and more companies have adopted continuous delivery ways of working. Um, which is cool, and at my current client, that is no exception. So we have full automated delivery pipelines that for each code change, we automatically can build, run different kind of test suites, and then provision this code change automatically to all of our environments in a full automated fashion. So every time we push to Git, um, we run all these things, and if it passes all the gatekeeping, the code change get deployed in like 30 minutes time to production. So this is great, we get fast feedback, this allows us to innovate and uh, uh, be fast with delivering new features to our customers. Together with this, we also have a distributed system architecture, which has evolved more into like a microservice-style architecture these days with roughly 100 services running in production at this point. So we've been doing microservices for the past few years, and we've gotten some valuable experience of that. And we really like microservices. Why? Because they're really small. We really like that. The best services we have are typically a few thousand lines of code only. Sure, we have services that do too much that are like 10,000 lines or something. Um, but we try to keep them really small. So they do one thing and do it extremely well. And this is good because it makes it very easy to reason about each service. What are its responsibilities? What are the capabilities? What's the boundaries for this service? The best services I think we have are those that we develop once and we never need to touch ever again. They just keep on doing what they're supposed to do until they're either decommissioned or replaced by a new service, which happens. And this is nice. So we won't be able to create new microservices as soon as there was a good uh, use case. Uh, but we had kind of a problem. Every time we wanted to create a new service, it wasn't really a walk in the park. It involved a lot of time consuming and manual work that we didn't really want to do. So we noticed that we didn't really create services whenever we had a good use case for it. I'm talking about stuff like creating a Git repository, create the walking skeleton for your new service, figure out which dependencies to use, all the necessary configurations in CI, CD pipelines, deployment orchestration scripts. You can imagine, it's quite time consuming. And quite frankly, it's quite boring as well to do. So we've, we've thought about this a lot. And we want it just to be easy. So we solved the problem by just automating the whole process. Everything that I just mentioned. So every time we want to create a new microservice today, we can just do that with one click of a button in our CI. So we have a beautiful pipeline. So every time we want to create a new service, we just hit the build button, give the service a name, and it will create all these things I just mentioned for you automatically. So we tailored this for our needs. We use Bitbucket, we use the REST API with in Bitbucket to create the repositories, create necessary commit hooks that we want to have. We, we allocate the resources we're going to need in Amazon because we use AWS, and so on. So every, every time we create a new service, just give it a name. We have to enter the LDAP credentials to be able to access different integration points, but it's fine. But surely we couldn't be the only ones who had this problem, right? So I talked with some colleagues of mine at Diabol, and indeed, there were more, more people that had the same problems. So we started to think about this. Why do we need to solve the same problems over and over again at different companies, like reinventing the wheel, which is like, every, everybody has their specific things, like we use Bitbucket, someone else uses GitHub or something, but 
Why do we need to reinvent the wheel? So why not create something that everyone can use, everyone in this audience can use and leverage from? So I talked with a friend of mine, Andrew Schaefer, and we decided to solve this problem by creating an open source project which allows you to create new microservices as easy by, as clicking a button. I'm going to show you the link in the end as well. But this talk is basically showing this open source project and you, how you can leverage from these concepts in your uh, organization where you work. Since we don't want to have any manual steps in the process, we obviously have to declare everything as source code, right? So we use infrastructure as code. Everything we do goes into source control. So where do we need to store this? Uh, we chose to use Git as our um, source control system. And we use an open source uh, uh, Git system which is called GOGS. So if you're not familiar with this, uh, it's an open source uh, Git repository system written in Golang, uh, full open source. If you're familiar with GitHub and Bitbucket, the user interfaces look quite the same. And for the CI CD engine, we use Jenkins because it's the most widely used CI CD platform out there today. And we use Docker. So when you run this project, you're going to spin up two containers, one with Gogs and one with Jenkins. And this is what we're going to play around with. So the purpose of the product is to do the groundwork for you. It lays the foundation for you to use. So the hard parts are solved. You just need to adapt this to your needs. So think of this like a pluggable architecture. That's why we use Docker. You probably won't use Gogs to host your source code. You probably use GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever you're using. And you probably won't use the Dockerized Jenkins either. You probably will use your normal Jenkins installation or whatever CI engine you're using. Uh, the same concepts are applied there as well. So enough of the talk. I'm going to show you how this works in practice. So if you clone this repository, you just hit run.shell, and it will fire up these two containers, Gogs and Jenkins. So if we go to localhost 3000, we're going to notice uh, we have two repositories in Gogs, which we prepared for you. The top one is uh, where we host the source code, which acts as a template for our microservice. So each service that we want to create from here on uses this template. So if we want to edit this, you just commit that into that source code repository, next service will use that. It could be a Maven archetype, a Spring Boot template, or it doesn't really matter which language you're using. And the bottom repository, the Jenkins seed, will contain all the necessary configurations uh, in Jenkins or for Jenkins, like the, all the necessary job configurations, the pipeline configurations, as source code in this repository. And we will hook this into Jenkins and play around with it. So if we go to localhost 880, we end up in Jenkins, and we only have one job here, the seed job. But if we run this, We've connected this to the Yankee Seed repository. So when we run this, it will automatically go through each CI configuration file in that repository and generate the corresponding uh, jobs in Jenkins and pipelines. So since we declare everything as code, the Jenkins configurations, we can make Jenkins use this to bootstrap itself. So if we run this, we get some new jobs, we get some new pipeline views. So we have the tabs on the top are the different pipeline views. So we've added a all pipelines view for you, which shows all the pipelines that are currently um, configured. So you can see what's happening. So as you notice, we have the C job, which has been running once, which was what we just did. And then we have a pipeline on the top right hand side, create microservice. So we'll use this pipeline every time we want to create a new service. So if we do that, we just give our service a name and which port it will listen to. Because we use HTTP and REST, so the template, our code skeleton will use this. So now we'll create a new Git repository in GOGS for this new service. And we will create some the necessary job configurations and pipeline configurations for Jenkins. And once we commit and push that, that will automatically trigger the C job 
to run once again and bootstrap itself with all the configurations that are in that repository, including the new ones we just committed. So when the C job is finished, we're going to notice we have a new pipeline for a new service that we just created. So the application we're using in this project as an example is just a basic Python Hello World application. So nothing fancy, but uh, you probably will use something that makes more sense for you. So you can jump into the uh, business logic immediately and try to solve your problems instead of wasting your time on all these manual things, uh, all the bootstrapping. All right, so now we have the pipeline for a new service. So if we run this, we compile, and unit test, whatever, all the necessary steps we have in our build step, and then we will deploy it. So we chose to have Docker as the uh, unit for our application, like, because we think uh, Docker Container is a good way to package and distribute your application. So that's what we use here to deploy it. And the example is just deploy it on the local machine. So in my case, my laptop, and it will run as a sibling container to Gogs and Jenkins. But if you're going to use this in your context, you probably will use something else to host your application, like Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, Amazon ECS, or whatever you're using. Like in our case, we use Amazon, so we use that. But uh, the purpose here is to just um, make it very simple for you to adapt it to your needs. So for now, hit localhost on that port that we specified, the application will respond, hello world. We've successful, su successfully deployed our new application. So now basically we just could jump into that Git repository, start hammering on the business logic. So in my team, when we use this concept, every time we want to create a new service, within 50 minutes we can jump in straight to the source code, start hammering on whatever we're building. So I hope this was uh, useful. Uh, very short and action-packed demo. Uh, but I really hope that this can be beneficial for someone. Uh, so please try it out. Play around with it. See if you can adapt it to your needs. Uh, please give feedback on what's not working, what's not there, so we can evolve this. Uh, I don't know if we have time for questions. This is 15 minutes. But uh, if someone has uh, one question, so if someone has questions, you have, there's a microphone on this side if you're close to it. Otherwise, just try to shout. Anyone has a question? Crystal clear. Everybody is eager to get their hands on this source code. Awesome. Uh, so if you have any questions, just ping me on Twitter or Tommy at diabol.se. Uh, thank you very much for listening. It was a pleasure.